Dorothy Ann Dula Cox, better known as Dot, affectionately known as Dot. Dot was born in Mabin, West Virginia on August 15, 1929. Dot expired in death on October 9, 2021. Dorothy Cox spent 60 years of her life on Cameron Drive in Benton, Virginia. Prior to that, she attended Parisburg High School in Parisburg. And later, Dot attended Concord College in West Virginia. Dot was crowned the Miss Giles County Cheerleader of the Year at Concord College. And she received later her bachelor's degree. Dot used her education to land a position in medical records at Lewis Gale Hospital in Salem, where she retired after 35 years of loyal service. Dot met and married Elveston Ballard Cox on August 29, 1953. Elveston was better known as E.B. During the course of 51 years of marriage, E.B. and Dot enjoyed a productive and satisfying life. They had a surviving son, too. Craig was nurtured and raised to love the Bible. I have a chuckle remembering Craig telling me E.B. forced him to go to Virginia Military Institute. <laughs> and he did it so that he would learn certain disciplines of life. By the way, it was always a special occasion for Dot to travel to Lexington where she and family watched her son Craig play football for VMI. Dot was the last of five siblings. For anyone that knew this lovely woman named Dorothy Cox, she was very hospitable, open-minded, open-handed, generous with herself and what she had. Dot was a homebody. She had a beautiful voice and was often heard singing her favorite songs while gardening doing chores or cooking meals. Preparing the table was also a very special occasion for Dot. Speaking of meals, one dear friend, Pat Basham, was quoted in these words about Dot. You can't get out of Dot Cox's home without having to sit and enjoy a meal. Something homemade, no excuses, you stay. End of quote. Dot also took pleasure in spending time at Myrtle Beach with the family. Bush Valley Swim Club was a, a frequent destination at that time here in Benton. Dot, well, she, she tolerated pets, but she fell in love with her son's dog. His name was Stranger. <laughs> her intimate source of uh, comfort was visiting with her son, Craig, and because Dot was a spiritual woman, she enjoyed sharing the Bible and praying with Craig. Which brings us to the reason why we're here today. In prayer, we are mourning the loss of Dot. All through mankind's history, since the fall of Adam and Eve, faithful servants of God have mourned the loss of their loved ones in death. According to the book of Genesis, 
Abraham grieved the loss of his dear wife, Sarah. Jacob, when he thought his son Joseph had been killed, wailed profusely. Please open your Bibles to John chapter 11. When Jesus arrived in the vicinity of a funeral for a very close friend of his, he was deeply troubled. Even though he knew by the power of Jehovah God's Holy Spirit, he would raise Lazarus. Take note of John 11, verse 33, of the experience Jesus had when he met Lazarus' sister. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he groaned within himself and became troubled. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus gave way to tears. What do we get from this experience? It's normal. It's very normal for humans to grieve. Even Jesus gave way to tears. This experience had a good ending, though, because Jehovah gave Jesus the power to bring Lazarus back to life and reunite him with those who loved him. Lazarus eventually died again. But that miracle gave glory to Jehovah and was a preview of what's in store on a permanent basis for mankind in the future. At Psalm 34, verse 18, Jehovah God makes it very clear that he has tender feelings for those who grieve and he promises to comfort them. Being the perfect reflection of his father, Jesus demonstrated Jehovah's comfort while Jesus was in the flesh. Death was not part of God's original purpose. In Genesis chapter 2, we read that death is the result of Adam's disobedience. He turned his back on his creator and he fell for the false hope. He gave way to a lie from the devil. It is written at uh, Romans chapter five that as descendants of Adam, we have inherited sin and death. However, the Bible gives hope that millions who have died will be brought back to life. At 1 Corinthians 15, 22, the Apostle Paul, under inspiration, wrote, For just as in Adam all are dying, so also in the Christ all will be made alive. What does this mean? When Adam sinned against God, he lost the gift of perfection that God gave him. He could no longer pass on eternal life to his earthly descendants. In a sense, we became hostages to sin and death. Like a, a kind foster father, Jesus stepped in. And guess what happened? Through the merits of his sacrificial death, as a perfect human, like Adam was, Jesus was able to pay the ransom and made up for Adam's undoing. Unlike Adam, Jesus stood the test of loyalty to Jehovah and integrity for truth. As a result, he gives life to us, his adoptive children who exercise faith in that sacrifice or the ransom that he paid as a perfect human. 
In 1 Corinthians 15, there are those who receive an invitation to reign in God's heavenly government along with the chief administrator, Jesus Christ. This heavenly government will oversee the restoration of a complete paradise, a paradisaic earth. And at Luke chapter 23, verse 43, there will be others, a great crowd of people who will enjoy life on this earth as a paradise. What is paradise? Much like the Garden of Eden, paradise is a park-like environment that the faithful will enjoy on a restored and cleansed earth. Which leads to this question. What is the condition of the dead now until the resurrection? Please turn with me again for the answer at Psalm 146, verse 4. This divine explanation counters some traditional beliefs that there is a spirit that inhabits a person's body and that after death, the person in the form of a spirit lingers on, perhaps in a holding pattern or in the spirit realm or goes to some place to be tortured forever for their sins. Here's what the Bible says about the dead at Psalm 146.4. His spirit or breath goes out. He returns to the ground and on that very day his thoughts do perish. In other words, Death is like a deep sleep without dreams. No worries. You know nothing. You feel nothing. You can do nothing. In fact, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 5 says that the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They know nothing at all. And because Jehovah is a just God, Acts chapter 24 promises that those who lived and died without the opportunity to understand and apply Bible truth will have the prospect of this resurrection. They will stand up. That's what resurrection means. Sounds good, doesn't it? It is good. In summary, how can we benefit from being here today? The same book of Ecclesiastes that I quoted from in chapter 9 assures us that the funeral, such as this, for Dot, reminds us of the brevity and uncertainty of life. The reality of death makes us ponder. It makes us think about how we are using our lives now. As we grieve the loss of Dot Cox, the resurrection hope provides an incentive to learn and do God's will. For those of us who do so can be certain that they will soon see their resurrected loved ones. Again, what a joy. That's the hope. And we, all of us here, prayerfully look to Jehovah to give us the needed strength until he provides permanent relief. We'll now ask Craig to uh, conclude with some thoughts and then closing prayer. Thank you, Paul. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just want to say I thank you all for coming today. Uh, it's a good example of 
showing uh, the love that you had for my mom and the love that she had for y'all. And a couple of things that she really liked to do was entertain and perform meals or prepare meals or little brunches for neighbors and friends. And I can see that through y'all. And uh, again, I appreciate you um, coming out and appreciate you, you, you sharing in her life. A um, couple things that I really didn't understand until I, I became a little bit older was um, her faith and belief in God. She knew more about the Bible than I, I realized. For years, I just kind of thought that, you know, she went to church and, you know, that was, that was it. But, you know, for the last cut three or four years, we had a lot of the good discussions, and, and she did know a whole lot about the Bible. So uh, I want to thank her for that. Uh, and by y'all being here, <clears throat> shows me that she may have touched each one of your lives in a, in a manner. and. Um, I think we're all a little bit better off in the world today for having known her. And um, I want to say um, thank you, Doc Cox. Uh, I used to call her, her, her nickname was Marna. And uh, I want to thank you for, for being my mom and, and sharing your life with me and bringing me into the world and, and so forth. So.